Amen, part two. Amen. I'm teaching on I'll, I, I keep him, part two. Amen. I keep him. And so our scripture is coming from Psalm 16 and verse 8. Psalm 16 and verse 8. Praise the Lord. Psalm 16. And verse 8, and it reads, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Uh, we said a powerful declaration. Bless the Lord on Sunday. Amen. I keep him so he keeps me. Praise the Lord. And I believe that as I am, many of you are stirred up after hearing that powerful word, persuaded to even walk closer with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. I keep him so he keeps me. The psalmist David in this text uh, has made a decision to always set the Lord in front of his eyes. The secret of a life of confidence in God is to remember to always keep our eyes on God, always, not our situations or our circumstances that we deal with on a daily basis, but we make sure that we keep our focus on Jesus. In other words, always keep God in view as your primary source of sight on your everyday journey, regardless of what your eyes may see. Bless the Lord. Yes, I see this, but I also choose to see the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. And this is where faith kicks in, folks. The Bible says, and the just shall live by faith. Faith is believing God with hope and confidence beyond what we see in the natural. I'll say that again. Faith is believing God with hope and confidence beyond what we see with the natural eyes. I'm not saying to live in denial of reality. No, I'm not saying that. But I am saying in the midst of everything that you are going through, make sure, praise the Lord, that you set your gaze on the Lord, that you set your gaze on what God is doing and what he's going to do. First point tonight, I just want to exhort you a little bit further. This is a daily walk. Type that in. This is a daily walk. What am I saying? Bless the, if you're going to be victorious in this life, victorious to walk in the victory that God wants you to have, praise the Lord. You got to know this is a daily walk. It is not just a Sunday or Wednesday, praise the Lord, or every now and then sometime. No, no, no. This is a daily walk. What I'm saying is that you and I have to have a daily walk. Hourly, every minute, make a choice. To You got to make a choice. Either I'm going to be controlled by faith or fear. We either going to trust God or trust what we see. Bottom line, no way around it. We either going to trust God or trust what we see. And as I look, amen, I don't know about you, but as I look back over my life, I continue. You know, when you look back over your life and see some of the hell that you've been through, praise the Lord, and some hell you went through and some way was harder. I mean, your situation was already hard, but it was even harder because there may have been some times in your life that you had a lack of faith in God. Your faith wasn't where it needed to be. Bless the Lord. So even though you were going through some challenges, you having doubt made it all the more harder. You not believing the way God wanted you to believe made it all the while harder. But you got to be determined like I am and purpose in your heart that I will trust God, even if that means looking like a fool before people. Bible says he'll take the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. People of God, we got a choice to make to put your confidence in other sources or Jehovah God, who is the God above all gods, who is sovereign in all of his ways, a God that's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. My question tonight is, which will you believe? Will you just believe what you see or what God said about your situation in the word? 
as David experienced this peace in all situations because his view of God in his life and to him, praise the Lord, it caused him to have a peace, it caused him to have a rest, and it caused him to have a confidence. Oh, th th this blessed me as I began to meditate on it. So much, da da David said, I, I, I always set the Lord before my eyes. And because God was in his view, it released the confidence that he had. And David said, I shall not be shaken or I shall not be moved. Is that your declaration tonight? If not, it can be if you purpose in your heart to not be moved by the changing of circumstances, but instead to put your eyes on God and trust in him and hope in his promises concerning you. See, the secret of peace is found in God alone. We can find confidence in his presence. We can find peace in his presence. And his presence is found when we seek him daily. Hallelujah. See, no genuine confidence. No, your confidence, your peace, your confidence is not found in people. It's not found in things. It's not found in stuff, status, money, relationships. It is in God alone. And so I got to renew my mind to what God has said about me. Give me Jeremiah 29 and 11. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Yvonne. I see you on tonight. God bless you. Praise the Lord. He said, he said in Jeremiah 29 and 11, you know it. We quote it all the time. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. See, in the midst of everything that may be going on in your life, this is the bottom line. That God has plans to prosper and not to harm, to give me a hope and a future. Praise the Lord. So when enemies say you don't have no future, that don't sound like God. When enemy says that you should give up, that don't sound like God. Because his purpose for me is to have a hope and a future. No, no matter, glory to God, what's going on in my life, Father, I know what your plans are. I know what you said about me, glory to God. Even if I feel inadequate about myself, hallelujah, your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. Your ways are higher than my ways. So I'm going to come on up a little higher and renew my mind to what you said about me. It says, declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. I don't know about you, but I'm going to stick with his plan. Hallelujah. Come on, type that in. Stick with his plan. Glory to God. Stick with his plan. You got a purpose in your heart. No matter what comes and goes, I'm going to stick with his plans. And when I renew my mind to what the word of God says, I feel confident and secure in knowing that God keeps me, hallelujah, I'm secure because he is with me. I'm secure because he lives in me, hallelujah, by means of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. I have purpose in my heart that I will no longer be in fear, come on, in security, but instead I'll be glad knowing that I can rest secure in Jesus. Hallelujah. It's where my confidence lies. My confidence is not just in myself. It's in the Lord, my maker. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we, people of God, we got to trust God. Place your confidence in him. He's the only one who can truly offer you strength and confidence that will enable you and preserve you in the midst of everything that you may be going through in your life. Glory to God. Where's your confidence tonight? Where's your trust tonight? Glory to God. Where are you putting your confidence? See, it's building your confidence in God where your faith is on tonight. If not, who or where is your confidence being built? Woo! Can I say something to you tonight? If your confidence is not in God, glory to God, then your labor is in vain. Come on. Hallelujah. All of my hope is in him. All of my trust is in him. All I'm banking on is him. Glory to God. And if it's not in God, then your labor is in vain. If your confidence is not in God, then your labor is in vain. 
If you're not trying to step back and let God do it and let God help you, all of your labor is in vain. Except the Lord build the house, they that labor, labor in vain. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I come to let you know tonight, I come to stir you up that no matter what's going on, you got to get, hallelujah, in faith. You got to change your confession and say, no matter what, I will not be shaken. I don't care if I'm in a storm. I will not be shaken. Why? Because my house is built on a firm foundation. Glory to God. Are you built on the sand? Come on, like the parable says. Hallelujah. Or are you built on the solid rock? No matter what, I will not be shaken. Next point, believe for it. Come on, tap, type that in. Believe for it. You got to believe for it. That's what David did. I will not be shaken. He said that with boldness. He said that with faith. Why? Because my eyes, he said, I keep my eyes on the Lord always. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Can I teach this tonight? How to not be shaken. You know, that sounds like a good self-help section of, at your local bookstore. But, but when you read the verse, there it is. It's the truth of God's word. If you want to be a man or woman of God who stands firm in his or her faith, you got to refuse to allow circumstances to dictate your reality. We will not be shaken. We need God and, and, we, and we apply the word of God. You got to keep your eyes on him every day, every moment of the day. You got to keep your focus on him. I hear somebody say the Christian life is not difficult. It's impossible. And I thought about that. Wow, the Christian life is not difficult. It's impossible. And then it went on to say impossible that is if we try to do it on our own. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, you got to get to the point and say, God, I can't do it without you. I don't want to do it without you. Glory to God. I don't have enough strength to do it without you. Glory to God. But there is a sure way tonight not to be shaken. Or there's a sure way to be shaken. Hop out of bed late, jump into your day without time for Jesus. Read your Bible, check off the box. But while you're reading your Bible, your mind is simultaneously planning breakfast, laundry, and the rest of your to-do list. No, no, no. You're reading the word, but it's not going in because you're too occupied. Or you complete your quiet time, glory to God. You close the book and then you move on to task mode with no, no connection to what you read. No meditation on what you read. No pondering on what you read. Glory to God. Sometimes you got to linger and meditate. Glory to God. Sometimes you got to get in this word, let this word get in you and sit back and say, now God, what are you saying to me? Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. You, you, you got to come to the household of faith. Hallelujah. Say, God, I hear the word. What are you saying to me today? What are you speaking to me today? What, what are you calling me to get out of what I'm hearing? This is why daily is so important. See, but a person of faith makes time for Jesus every day. They do it because they know they need him. Woo, I don't know about you. I make time for the Lord because I need him. And they make time for the Lord because they know, hallelujah, that the rest of the day is fruitless apart from him. That, that's why uh, uh, seeking him daily is so important. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. Come on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Give us this day our daily bread. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but we need daily bread. Oh, uh, yeah. We, we need daily bread. Come on here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I said, Lord, why is this so important? Why, why, why are you driving this point home to us in this season? Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, and, and this came to me. He or she fills up so that he or she is ready to pour out. Woo. I fill up so that I can be ready 
to pour out, Lord Jesus. You do know that, 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 that God hasn't just blessed you, but he's blessed you to be a blessing. You do know that your testimony is not just for yourself. You do know that the things that you are hearing, things that you're receiving, things that God is speaking to you in church, things that God is giving to you in your own time is not just for you. The reason why I fill up is so I can be ready to pour out. The reason why I got to seek him every day, because at some point of the day, something is going to come into my life. Hallelujah. And I got to be ready to pour out. I can't get nobody in here. Hallelujah. Something's going to come into my life that day to pull on me. Hallelujah. And I need to be ready to give an answer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, I, I need to fill up every day, you know, because Houston traffic will take something out of you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Folks on your job will take something out of you. Glory to God. The cares and stresses of life will take something out of you. So I need God every day. I need you to fill me up so that I can be ready to pour out. Oh, come on here. Glory to God. That's why I need it. I don't just need it for me. Glory to God. I don't know who I'm going to have to minister to in the course of the day. Hallelujah. I don't know who going to need to talk to me in the course of the day. I don't know who I'm going to meet in the grocery store. Come on here. I, I, so I need to fill up so that I can be ready to pour out. This ain't the hour that you're going to refer everybody to your pastor. No, that there's a word in you. And see, when I'm full, I don't mind pouring. Oh, Jesus. See, we don't like to pour because half the time we dry or empty. Oh, y'all don't want to talk tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we want to be frustrated. I wish everybody would leave me alone. Glory to God. But you ain't got full, 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 filled up yourself to the overflow so that you can be a blessing to somebody else. And I found out something. When you get full, I can't get nobody. Glory to God. When you get full, hallelujah, what you have to do I have to do this. I have to move it. No, what you have to do gives way to I want to. And then it'll move into I delight to. Come on. When Jesus wants to tap you and use you, it's no longer I have to. You say I want to. God's been downloading some stuff into me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My prayer life has been on fleek. Glory to God. I got the joy of the Lord. I'm ready to encourage somebody. Hallelujah. I'm ready to tell what the Lord has done for me. So what I have to now becomes I want to. And then when you get into the overflow, you say I delight to. Hallelujah. Come on. So what is it? Have to, want to, I delight to. Why? Because I'm full. Why? Because I keep him so he keeps me. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You should always have an attitude when it's time for God to use you. This released the confidence in David. It released the confidence. He said, I keep my eyes always on the Lord. In other words, it's a daily choice. It's a conscious decision about who's in charge. I keep my eyes on the Lord. It's a constant decision about who's in charge. Can I say something to you tonight? Yesterday's choice doesn't cover today. <laughs> Yesterday's choice does not cover today. That's why we used to sing the song in the church, I choose you again and again. I choose you again and again. You mean so much to me, dear Lord, I choose you again. You got to choose it every day over and over again. That's why, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, from the bottom of my heart, holler to the depths of my soul, holler, let the church say yes, 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 all them hymns. From generation to generation, it never gets old because yesterday's choice does not cover today. Day. Glory to God. And you got to get up and say, God, and I still tell you yes, and I still tell you yes to your will and yes to your way. I know I was all right on Sunday, but on Monday I tell you yes. I know I was all right on Monday, but now it's Tuesday and I tell you yes, and so on and so forth. Yesterday's choice does not cover today. Woo, my God, hallelujah. We need fresh manna every 
single day. Choose him today. Prioritize with him today. And then do it again tomorrow. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? Prioritize him today and then do it again tomorrow. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. See, putting him first. That's what David's really saying. I know he's going to take care of what concerns me. I won't be shaken because my eyes is on him. I put him first. I keep him first so he can keep me. See, putting Jesus first is a statement of faith. When you make a decision, it's for somebody uh, to put him first. It's a statement of faith. That means there will be enough time for everything else in my day. But one thing I am going to do is make time for God. I'd rather something don't get done and I made time for God than everything else in my life gets done and I miss my time with God. Come on here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. No, no, no. I'm putting God in the schedule. See, when we say putting Jesus first, it's the declaration of his lordship. That means he's in charge of my life. <laughs> That's why David said, I won't be shaken because I know who's in charge of my life. Hallelujah. And I know he's in charge of my life because I always keep the Lord before me. Putting Jesus first is a declaration, watch this, of my neediness. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but when it comes to God, I'm needy. Glory to God. Anybody with me tonight got some neediness? Glory to God. So putting God first is a declaration of my neediness. Apart from him, apart from him, I'm toast. Apart from him, I cannot do this thing. Hallelujah. Apart from him, I can't walk this walk. Putting Jesus first claims victory for today. Oh, my God. I said putting Jesus first claims victory for today. Without Jesus, I might as well wave the white flag of defeat before the battle even begins. But when I put him first, glory to God, it's my declaration of victory today. And no matter what comes, no matter what goes, no matter what comes later on in this day, no matter what comes, I won't be shaken because Jesus is first. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, you got to choose to put your eyes in his book first. You, you have no business putting your face on Facebook until you put your face in his book. I can't get nobody in here. Glory to I'm talking about putting him first. That means when I put him, when ooh, I'm getting excited. Glory to God. Because when I put him first, that means everything else in my day is seasoned, softened, and saturated by the Holy Ghost living on the inside of me. Ah, when I put him first, everything is seasoned, softened, and saturated by the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God, glory to God, takes the Word of God. Watch this. When I, when I put him first, it transforms my words. Woo! Hallelujah. Yeah. See, when you submit yourself, he'll transform your words. Come on. The Holy Ghost will talk to you and say, don't say it like that. Uh-uh. Don't write that like that. Come on. Glory to God. Huh? It'll transform your thoughts. It'll transform your actions and your attitudes of the day. I don't know about you, but I need God all day, every day. Somebody type that in all day, every day. You know, a daily life transform. A daily life is when, 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 God, when your eyes are on the Lord always, your daily life becomes transformed. The mundane becomes divine. And the ordinary has purpose. I was studying this, and, and, and the Holy Spirit began to deal with me. See, the truth of Psalm 16 and 8 in the Old Testament is illustrated by Peter in the New Testament. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I said Psalm 16 and 8 in the Old Testament is illustrated by Peter 
in the New Testament. Give me Matthew 14, 25 uh, through 32. Matthew 14, 25 through 32. He gave us an example in Peter of what keeping your eyes before the Lord always would do. Verse 25 says, Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to him walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled and said, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, but be of good cheer. For it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered said, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And Peter had come down out of the boat and he walked on the water to Jesus. Glory to God. But when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and began sinking. And he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said, oh, you little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got in the boat, the wind ceased. You know this. We preach this. You know this. Glory to God. Peter got out of the boat and walked on water. And he had his eyes on Jesus when he was walking on the water. Come on here. Glory to God. But when he looked away, the wind was blowing. When he looked away, he got distracted. When Peter took his eyes off Jesus, he became shaky. I can't get nobody in here. Well, what did David say? David said, my eyes are always on you, and I shall not be shaken. Now, Peter in the New Testament, as long as his eyes was on Jesus, hallelujah, glory to God, he was unshakable. Glory to God. But when he took his eyes off the Lord, he got shaky. He got rocky. That wind began to rock. Come on. Hallelujah. He's found himself sinking. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But listen, it, it was the same conditions. It was the same condition when he was walking on the water. What changed? He took his eyes off the Lord. Glory to God. See, you can be in the midst of fire, but your eyes on Jesus and he's keeping you. You don't even realize how hot it is and it's burning up. But you take your eyes off Jesus, you start talking about, ooh, how hot is it? What is the temperature? I got to get out of because you, you get shaky. My God, they begin to sink. What a metaphor. What a metaphor. As long as his eyes was on Jesus, he was walking on the water. But when he took his eyes off, he began to sink. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can have a good day. You just got to keep your eyes on the right thing. We can do the impossible. We can serve. We can give. We can forgive. We can say yes. We can refuse to be shaken as long as we keep our eyes on Jesus. I can't forgive them. They hurt me too much. Yes, you can. Get your eyes on Jesus. Woo. I can't love them. Yes, you can. Get your eyes on Jesus. I can't serve. Yes, you can. Get your eyes on Jesus. I can't give. My money's funny. Yes, you can. Get your eyes on Jesus. Get your eyes on Jesus and you will see that he'll supply every one of your needs according to his riches and glory. Get your eyes on Jesus. I have set, I have set the Lord always before me. Hallelujah. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, listen. You can't step out on the water. You better stay in the boat if you ain't ready to keep your eyes on Jesus. Glory to you. You can't be a water walker and not trust God. You got to keep your eyes on him. Glory to God. We went through a whole pandemic. Glory to God. Church shut down and everything. What I had to do, I had to keep my eyes on the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You mean over a year of no church, I had to keep my eyes on the Lord. I had people walk away. You know what I had to do? Keep my eyes on the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Church open. Attendance didn't bounce back. Hallelujah. What I had to do? Keep my eyes on the Lord. Glory to God. And what happened? He sustained. And what happened? He kept blessing. What happened? And he kept sending people in. And what happened? See, you focus more on who left. You need to focus on who stayed. I can't get nobody in here. Hallelujah. God will sustain you no matter what if you keep your focus on the right place. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Folk walked away that I love. What I had to do? Keep my eyes on the Lord. Keep on preaching. Keep on standing. Working with the willing. Celebrating the new fruit. <laughs> That's how we make it. You got to keep your eyes on the Lord. Come on, somebody shout it. I will not be shaken. 
I will not be shaken. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My last scripture tonight, Psalm 62. This is blessing somebody. This is blessing somebody. It's blessing me. Psalm 62, verse 1 and 2, and I'm going to skip down to verse 5 through 8. Truly my soul waits upon God. From him comes my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. My soul wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him, for God is a refuge for us. See, this Psalm 62 is a psalm of victory. It's a proclamation of the one who has come to a place. And they say they will not be moved. See, you got to make a decision. Either my circumstances are going to move me from faith in God, or I'm going to keep standing by faith regardless of my circumstances. That's, what, that's the two choices you got to make. Either my circumstances are going to move me from faith in God or I'm going to stand by faith regardless of my circumstances. God, Hallelujah. But you got to say, listen, are all these things proof that God has forsaken me or have I forsaken God? We got to move into the place that we understand what God is doing in our life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We got to move. And here's my last point tonight. Watch your reaction. Watch your reaction. See, what we have here is, is your circumstances. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We cannot function our relationship of faith in Christ because if we allow what happened to us to move us, from victory. See, you got to understand something. I keep my eyes upon him and I shall not be shaken. Some people teach today that victory in such a trial would be when you get out of a trial. A lot of folk believe they don't have victory until they come out of a trial. They suggest that you don't really have authority until you come out, then you can testify. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If they only think that you got victory when you get out of a trial some miraculous way, but that's error. Glory to God. According to the Bible, victory is not when I get out of a trial. Rather, victory is when I stand by faith in my personal relationship with God despite the trial. That's when you're walking in victory. While I'm in it, I'm still victorious. When I'm in faith, while I'm going through, that's when I have victory. I'm, I'm going to have victory. No, 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 victory is already yours. It's when I stand by faith in my personal relationship despite the trial. Victory is achieved when I overcome the trial by faith. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, you can come out of something, but if you're not coming out in faith, Bible says whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. See, faith is the victory. When I'm in faith, that is the victory. Lord, come on, type it in. Faith is the victory. When I can keep my spirits up, when I can keep my counters up and hold on until I see manifestation, you already walking in victory. Because through faith we stand in, depend on the victory that Christ has already won. We sing the song in church, hallelujah, you have won the victory. Hallelujah, you have won it all for me. So we got to understand that, folks. Glory to God. Our faith is evidence that we have victory in us. Now, thanks be to God who's given us the victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Victory is already in us. 
Glory to God. When you surrendered your life to God, glory to God. Hallelujah. When I got unbelief or fear or condemnation, then you have the victory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How many know we going from victory to victory? Glory to God. That's where we going. Victory to victory. We victory. We have victory in. Hallelujah. And when we out, even more victorious. We going from victory to victory. That's where we going. Somebody say victory to victory. Type that in. Victory to victory. Glory to God. And that's the place we have to be moved. And that's why I want to encourage you and encourage your faith tonight. No matter what's going on, no matter what you see, glory to God. Hallelujah. And, and here's the last thing I want to submit to you tonight. Don't be moved by exhausted emotions. Oh, Jesus. Don't be moved by exhausted emotions. See, because when you're tired, you can't trust how you feel. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I said, when you're tired, you can't trust how you feel. You got to stand firm in faith. You got to stand firm on the word of God. Don't be moved by exhausted emotions. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to say, God, you're Lord over my life. Hallelujah. I'm keeping you before me. Renew my mind. Renew my strength. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes you, you got to hear folk talking to me like, mm, I hear what you're saying, but you're just tired. When you're tired, you can't trust how you feel. You ain't thinking with a level head. That's exhaustion talking. That's weariness talking. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to rest up and get yourself together and start over again. Glory to God. You said that when you was exhausted. You said that when you was at your wit's end. You said that when you was tired, tired, tired. You didn't really mean that. You said it, but you didn't really mean it. Ooh, that's for somebody tonight. Glory to God. So we got to have victory. We got to walk in victory. 100% total victory. I keep him so that he can keep me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise for this word on tonight. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. His word is good. His word is faithful. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for grace tonight upon this word. I thank you for grace upon this teaching tonight. I thank you, Lord, that your people have gathered in to hear this strong word. I thank you that what was said needed to be said and what we receive, glory to God, we stand firm on the word of God. Thank you, God, that this word tonight solidified our foundation, made us to be more secure in you, made us to be more secure in the God of our salvation. And I say tonight, we'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Thank you that even the more we set our gaze, we set our eyes upon you, we set our hope upon you. Glory to God. And I thank you that you are sustaining us and you're making us victorious in every way. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Come on, just put some hand claps or something in, in the box for that, for that word tonight. Glory to God. His word is strength. His word is good. Hallelujah. And we thank God for his goodness. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lord. Hallelujah. We trust this was a blessing to you. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We praise you. We love you tonight, Lord. Thank you, God, for everyone that sold, everyone that gave into this Wednesday night offering. We thank you tonight, God, for, the, for blessing them and keeping them and, and uh, just prospering this ministry and prospering those who are sowing. We thank you this is good ground, fertile ground, and we thank you that good fertile ground always produces. And we thank you for it. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and thank God. Well, listen, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for being with us. Amen, for, for joining in with us. And we pray you were blessed. And uh, join us right here on this Sunday morning at Hosanna Family Church. Amen, 4505 Highway 6 North in West Houston, 77084. Stop by the church. Come see us. Campus doors open at 1045. Service starts at 11 a.m. Amen. Bless the Lord. All of you can't get here in person. You can join us right back here online. All right. We love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you, and you have a victorious week. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Thank you.